वंदे हम श्री गुरो श्रीजुता पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपं साग्रजा सो लेसन थर्टीन रिलेशनशिप्स विद इन इस्कॉन डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ गुरु डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन सिंपल वर्ड्स मीन्स परसिविंग नोटिंग और मेकिंग अ डिस्टिंगशन सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू पर्सनली हैड एनी एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ बींग डिस्क्रिमिनेटेड अगेंस्ट से अबाउट ऑन आवर टेम्पल where you felt that because you are a disciple of a particular guru some other guru's disciple did not behave well with you how many had that experience wow that's quite a considerable achievement of our temple <laughs> out of 35 devotees only one felt like that <laughs> and rest nobody has ever an experience like this i think we should give congratulations sir to our our you know counselors and teachers and organizers of the temple are so that is typically due to neophyte mentality you know when you have insecurity and envy you unnecessarily start making just like banthara she told kai kai that ram is separate and bharat is separate you better think of your bharat's well be- well being and if ram becomes the king you will be in big trouble hmm? and foolishly without even thinking what she is doing kai kai really thought you know after hearing so much terrible from the mantras poison that she put in her ear so sometimes we also come in contact with certain other devotees they may tell you ye sab kya hai isko on disciple course mein charcha karte se mai bolne ke liye acha lagta hai real life mein aisa nahi hota hai har ek koi apna guru ke bare mein discrimination karta hi hai tumko bhi karna chahiye <laughs> you know you will hear people like that you know Okay, well, it's a theory. Theory, it is good to hear that you know, don't discriminate on the basis of guru. In real life, it doesn't work. They do it, so we should also do it. What should be our response? If somebody said that to you, what will you tell them? If somebody said like that to you, yes. If you truly love your guru and go and ask him. how would he deal with that situation he would not endorse to your behavior what else attend idc go and attend idc properly <laughs> i think you have not got good training <laughs> yes what is the difference between us ha ah, what is the difference between us and them then if you also become like this then how are you special hmm? one time bhakti tirtha maharaj because he came from african american background some neophyte disciples of prabhupad were criticizing him they were saying that oh he's afro you know negro he's not so they were white bodied americans and he was black bodied so he became very disturbed because he had joined this con loving prabhupad following his teachings and when he saw this discrimination he felt very bad and he went and complained to prabhupad he said prabhupad I didn't expect this. Some of your disciples are, you know, putting me down, saying these things against me, that I don't have a white-skinned, you know, body. And Prabhupad, instead of taking his side, he chastised him. Prabhupad said, "If they are looking on the bodily platform, and you are getting disturbed, then how are you different from them?" you're also on bodily platform <laughs> that's why you're getting disturbed <laughs> that's what prabhat meant <laughs> you know so better you go back and he got really convinced this guru of this movement is not an ordinary person ye baaki sab jhamela kuch bhi ho raha hai idhar udhar wo sab theek hai but this person is not an ordinary person he got that conviction that day so same with us also in marathi they say ekane gai marli mhanun dusra ne vasru maru ne what does that mean somebody is doing a big blunder that does not give us permission to do small small blunders <laughs> that is not the point 
Yes. So we should be very careful hmm? not to take to such philosophy. We should tell them, Prabhu, as far as my training goes, my convictions go, it is impossible that I can look like this at the things. Even if they are like that, if you stop giving responses that typically we give, eventually situation will become better. Otherwise what will happen? We will keep simply quoting others bad examples and worsen the whole situation with each other. So that is how we would respond to that situation. Would you like to narrate what was the discrimination that you experienced? Yes. Give mic. <coughs> so we are holding uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam Satsang at our home since four, four and a half years. And uh, we are having one more disciple of another guru in the same building. They used to have their satsang also on some Thursday. So, few days it went well. Uh, initially, they used to attend our satsang as well. And then they started their own satsang on Thursday. After few days, they started their satsang on Friday at the same time. So, people were getting confused where to go. So, few people, they came at our satsang. Few of people who were neophyte, they went to their satsang. And then they suddenly came to our home and said that you should not pull our devotees and we will not pull your duties. First thing. Second thing is, while doing the fund collection, they literally came, they sat down, let's distribute the building. We will do this for our temple, you do this for your temple. You don't touch these buildings, we will not touch these buildings. This is second thing. Third thing is, whenever there, there was, they used to conduct some uh, big functions in our society, and the senior kind of consular level duty, he used to treat very nicely with us in the beginning and after now the situation is he even doesn't look at us he doesn't even respond to us and you know not interested you know just some people like they we don't literally don't mind because we respect his sincerity we respect his seva to the temple we respect his dedication the third thing is uh, fourth thing when we uh, ask their uh, uh, their son and their daughter-in-law just casually, why don't you attend our satsang? Similarly, they got frightened that we are pulling them in our Guru Maharaj group. And they, you know, became so agitated and they said that, please don't call them. <laughs> okay. Hmm. And while, uh, while coming, so we, we were there in uh, Nigri Temple, uh, opening of Nigri Temple, while coming back, one of the very senior disciples of that Maharaj was with us. We actually gave them the lift and we were having very nice relationship that time, somehow. While coming back, uh, that Mataji was talking so many things about how they are treated, how uh, they are, you know, um, uh, they are given a secondary priority because of different Guru Maharaj and how all the important sevas are given to only one Guru Maharaj group and how the groupism, how this politics works, and even the senior disciple of other Guru Maharaj are involved in these things. And she was uh, nearly 45 to 50 minutes, she was just talking on this topic. Fortunately, I was driving, so I could not hear, but my wife, <laughs> she was totally, you know, uh, okay. after dropping them, you know, many kya sunai itne der ta, kya kare bhi just So what happens to you when you hear such things? First thing is, I always remember the interaction between Guru Maharaj when they meet each other, right? So, I have seen the interaction with my spiritual master, with Jayapataka Maharaj, with other spiritual master, how they treat. And I always remember the dedication, the sacrifice that these Prabhupada disciples has done. They have dedicated their lives. Everybody, all Prabhupada disciples are suffering for such a severe diseases because of such a things that nobody realizes that. Their health is at toss now. If they do not take care of all these things, it's very difficult. And we fortunately, because of your mercy, we got a uh, chance to serve Shri Prabhupada disciple like Sankarshan Prabhu and Sachimata Mataji. And when she, she every year she uh, does visit us, they both visit us, 
and she always tells us, you don't know what is the value of Shrila Prabhupada disciples. Every, each and every Prabhupada disciple is like a gem. They cannot be compared to the whole wealth of this universe. They have dedicated, they have done so much of sacrifice, they have done so many things that we cannot tell. So, that kind of respect, that kind of mentality, we should we offer. Are them. Yes. And that's why, you know, we feel that, okay, this is because something wrong might have happened with them that we are not aware because we are very much, we are still neophyte to this con culture and all these things. And we don't know what happened before five years, six years, ten years. Somebody has, might have hurt it or might have done something which might be because unintentional, intentional, we don't know. So we don't, we, know, we are not at so that I would, level. I would like to just go back to that earlier point that you were saying that there was the discrimination that was experienced and between these two families, your family and that other Guru's disciples family, there was a strain and in that situation, how should you respond? That was my question. Yes, so what we do is, we generally go to all the satsang that they call us. We don't have anything, any grudge in our mind. We go, whatever seva they try to offer us, we do and we don't have any grudge. Whatever satsang they call us, we go. We generally, we have skipped temple satsang to attend their satsang. So wow, that quite a bit of sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, that kind of respect we try to show that we don't have any grudge. We don't, we don't want to differentiate. We don't want to discriminate. Everybody, all the Brahmachari disciples of that Guru Maharaj also at the same level that we see our Guru, uh, Guru Maharaj mm -hmm. Brahmachari disciples. So that, that way we try to do. And we also try to engage them in our service. But you know, that's their marji. And we cannot force, enforce them ki aap aiye or baithiye karke. If they want, yes, the doors are always open for High them. time for them to attend IDC. <laughs> <laughs> we can't comment because they are senior, so that's from our side. Many Rest. of our devotees, when they attended IDC, the first response they gave is, this should be also done for initiated devotees. <laughs> 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 not just for those who are not initiated. Hmm. So we also request you to kindly go out and advertise a little. Not that we want people to join our course or anything like that, but there will be multiple teachers. Now Amandev Pru, Ramanand Pru are here. In future, many others will also become teachers in IDC. But this is for the good of ISKCON. This training and education will go a long way in setting right all these problems and clutter. Imagine somebody is given right in the foundational growth, these principles. Okay, look at life like this within ISKCON. Things will be so much different. Hmm? Thank you for sharing your experience. The understanding of this discrimination or being feeling of being discriminated against is certainly very painful. So we should try from our side to be a little sensitive in the way others perceive our words and actions. Like it's just one gesture of inviting somebody to come to the home, their son and daughter, can cause such a big disturbance for them. Not that he did anything out of ill intention. So we need to become all the more stronger. So when the trust is lacking, even a small word or one small gesture can be treated as an offense. But when the trust is very high, even without saying anything, things get accomplished. So we need to build such trust with each other. Okay. So go to the next page. Describe your vision of what ISKCON would be like. If we could just follow all these things that we learnt in the IDC course. <laughs> if we learn to maintain cooperative relationships, what will happen in future? Harmony in ISKCON. What will that do? Master preaching, master preaching will be effective. More devotees, happy devotees and steady devotees. That is the mission of ISKCON. So that will get accomplished. What else? What will happen to ISKCON? ISKCON body will not be broken down into several times. Ah, we will not become like separated small small units eventually vanishing into oblivion. We will actually remain a powerful force 
or a movement on the planet? Yes. Real Viscount that Srila Prabhupada wanted to establish yes. a common existence. He built a home in which the whole world can live peacefully together. That will actually come true. Yes. We may not want to go back to Godhead. Spiritual is Ah, we may not feel like going back to Godhead. <laughs> we will think we are already back to Godhead. Where do we go from here? We are already staying in spiritual world, in the association of such wonderful Vaishnavas around us. Very beautiful thought. Yes? Ah, Iskwan will really have a power. No body, no force on the earth, no Kali Yuga, no anything can come in the way of Iskwan's activities. United we stand, divided we fall. Yes, Vamandi bro. No matter how many number of generations pass, it is possible to start a Amazing. The effect will be seen positively over a generation after generation. What happens to ISKCON? So if you right now only put things in place very nicely, many many generations later, ISKCON will still stand united. Okay, last beautiful quote. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord is speaking to the sons of King Prachinabar Hishat. The Lord said, My dear sons of the king, I am very much pleased by the friendly relationships among you. All of you are engaged in one occupation, devotional service. I am so pleased with your mutual friendship that I wish you all good fortune. Now you may ask a benediction of me. Next, cooperate to keep this institution together after I am gone. Your love for me, said Srila Prabhupada, will be shown by how much you cooperate to keep this institution together after I am gone. Why do you think did Prabhupada use the word cooperate? Because this is the age of Kali, quarrel and hypocrisy. You could have said na, how you love each other. You could show your love for me by how you show love for each other. Why did he use the word cooperate? <laughs> Exactly. This is the bare minimum expectation Prabhupada is putting. He said, oh, love will be seen later. You will cooperate with one another. So that is why it's a very followable instruction. That's the point. If Prabhupada would have given an instruction like that, we would have caused Guru Aparad <laughs> straight away <laughs> because it is very difficult for us to follow. But cooperation is something we can do. So can you tell us what is it required to build such relationships with other devotees, other gurus and their disciples. How do we go ahead, henceforth, if we come across conflicts? What will we do? So this is like a crash course on conflict resolution. What will you do? You came across some conflict. Aapka kisi ke saath panga ho gaya. Kya karo gaya? Discuss uh, one to one and in all in a, uh, in a close working way, this can be the God problem. So he's saying clarify needs and values. You know, we have our needs and values, other devotees have their needs and values. So we need to talk to each other. Can you just make it a little plain to each other what is the need and value that is not being met because of which we have become you know, loggerheads with each other what will you do next consult some senior from the temple ok uh, that's an external agency so let's put it on the other side take 
superior assistance what else you know what is the most important thing in why we can't cooperate or why we can't even be together because we lack common purpose or common vision abhi ego to sabse bada problem hai original problem hai hamara why we are in material world to suddenly say become egoless you become egoless i'll become ego oh bahut difficult hai so build common vision which means we think when when how can they meet their needs and values while we meet our needs and values and thus we build a common vision what next forgive and forget that's a very wonderful philosophical thought uh, in terms of um, it's not a managerial procedure i hope you get what i'm saying so let's put that also on this side forgive and forget be vaishnava sometimes it's difficult to do that but still it's important to consider that aspect what else even if someone doesn't loves others guru but they love prabhuva so we can tell them what prabhuva expected Okay. Establish common purpose. Bring Prabhupada's interest. Bring in. Not your interest. Not my interest. Okay. Yes. Not to highlight the conflict openly uh, in a for like to to others and like not publicize the conflict. So okay. Okay. Handle dissensions and conflicts in private. don't publicize them don't speak ill about those devotees to other people around and then it disrupts everybody's mind and then it go somewhere else after that it becomes different the main issue remains somewhere else <laughs> you said that about me you know i said this about you and all that i thought that you said that i am thinking that you must have thought huh? <laughs> are oh idhar mein se bahar aao you know so what is the tangible thing to be done now so they just go somewhere else practically the one thing i was looking for is give commitment to live by that common common vision whether the other party is living by it or not you become you have this commitment that i live by this once we decide upon it so which basically means be exemplary from your side be committed or be exemplary one very important thing is communication in iskon in modern times there is a term that they often use called non violent communication <laughs> generally our tendency is to put off all communication as soon as some conflict comes hum tere se baat nahi karte to humse baat nahi karne ka that is not going to resolve the problem it will actually worsen it so we need to know the art of communication but without having set a proper example and without having had mutual understanding here it is called mutual rub respect understanding and benefit unless we establish these three things in our relationship we cannot resolve a conflict so do we have mutual respect for each other if not then better work at it first how do we see each other then have you understood the other person's problem clearly why they are not cooperating so that is understanding and then are we considering their benefit also in making a decision or are we just thinking about our own benefit so mutual that's the important word respect understanding and benefit so from that comes communication if these things are not in the background communication becomes halted no more communication 
As soon as people sense that you have no respect for them, you don't understand what they are saying or doing. You don't have mutual benefit in mind. You just think of your own selfish needs. No communication. Then the fifth important thing in dealing with such conflicts in the relationships is unconditional service. So there is one forum at which we have conflict, right? That does not mean that does not mean we are at conflict everywhere else in the world. For example, let's say you had a Janmashtami stall to be put up in the temple, and your department is say um, preaching department, somebody else's department is fund collection department. Both wanted a prominent place. Preaching wale ne bola re fund fund kya karte rehte ho bajo hato abhi preaching ka time hai no people are coming and fund people said tumhara preaching kuch chalega nahi zyada din <laughs> you know unless we have some funds here <laughs> to manage the temple so they are you know fighting with each other so what happens typically we may sort out or not sort out that issue but other than that one stall being put up in that place do we have some other things to offer to each other or not can we sit and chant together can we dance in Guru Puja together? Can we serve Prasad to that devotee? When that devotee falls sick, can we go to his home and look after him? And make some special prasadam and send him on his birthday? So this is called as... So there is one area in which there is a conflict. We need not make that havi, as they call it. No? Take over the rest of the whole thing in Vaishnavism around each other. So we can think, okay, there is a conflict in this area. But there is a lot of other area that is open for give and take. And we should continue doing that give and take with those people. That is the way you actually melt their heart. They know that you are not having any malice in your heart. You have your own principles and you have your own understanding of them. That's all. But otherwise there is no issue. Are we getting what we are discussing? That's called unconditional service towards each other. And that works much more wonders than our hours and hours of argumentation with each other. Yes, question. We should not hate each other. Ah, we should not hate each other as Vaishnavas. Very important. Uh, but I heard this from Brahmacharya actually. Uh, so he, he, he says. I think some, uh, talking about something can, can uh, I mean, disturb a relationship, better to not talk on that topic, uh, avoid that topic, I mean, something like that. So, uh, I don't know who said that, yeah. but and whenever there is a conflict, we tend to give two types of reaction. One is called silence and other is called violence. Yeah. So, so yeah. We, which so, will, what you are suggesting is better not talk about on, it. On that uh, thing, which will uh, uh, increase the conflict, better to talk uh, something uh, that... I would make it reverse. Here. Your ability to be a good Vaishnava is dependent on how wonderfully can you handle crucial conversations with other devotees. Conversations where things are difficult to deal with. How well can you act in those situations decides your quality of relationships and also your quality of contribution. And that much you can make spiritual progress. The tendency to avoid is actually muktivadi. You know that? No panga. Om shanti. Let's be having no suffering. So we need actually not this and not this. What we need is goal-based which is actually a higher, another alternative. Mutual sharing, caring and offering. So we don't want silence, we don't want violence. This is the middle thing that we want. We both have a common goal and we are ready to share, care and make an offering together for Krishna. So that is what is needed in the background as a mentality. So let's just conclude today's discussion. I want to just ask you one last question. 
वॉट डू यू थिंक कैन वी डू टू इंक्रीज कोऑपरेशन और कम्युनल हार्मनी इन अवर मल्टी गुरु कल्चर इज द क्वेश्चन क्लियर वॉट कैन वी डू टू इंक्रीज कोऑपरेशन और हार्मनी इन अवर मल्टी गुरु कल्चर दैट क्वेश्चन इज नॉट देयर इट्स माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ओके मेक इट अ पॉलिसी आई विल अटेंड व्यास पूजा ऑफ ऑल द यू नो मेजर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर्स ऑफकोर्स इट मे हैपन इन फ्यूचर इज कॉन दैट फिफ्टी गुरुज आर देर एंड फिफ्टी व्यास पूजा आर हैपनिंग इन वन ईयर आई डोंट नो हाउ विल दैट बी पॉसिबल बट एट लीस्ट वी शुड ट्राई फ्रॉम अवर साइड नाउ इट इज पॉसिबल इन करंट सिचुएशन येस यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन that's an interesting information <laughs> uh, who told that you are not allowed to uh, attend other gurus vyas puja it's a voluntary thing first of all nobody is forcing you to attend so there is no such a thing that you have to attend here we are talking about if you have a devotee friend who is other gurus disciple and he is celebrating his gurus vyas puja will you go there or not forget all this iskon and you know idc training and all that i am just asking you a question on a family relationship basis but possibly but then uh, i was not aware why will you not go otherwise on personal relationship you are agreeable to go then why would you otherwise not go i mean the institution doesn't uh, i mean say that uh, the institution says that one should not be uh, what we said is you should not push another guy to come and attend your guru's vyas puja that you should not do but you can voluntarily go and attend another guru sesha so yeah that is allowed so please be clear of what we are saying many times like passes are given yes ha that is a pulling pushing business ki some guru is celebrating vyas puja and you are worried that mera chela you know kahin aur chala jayega so you give him a pass you know to go to that vyas puja so that once he goes there then he gets converted you know baptized <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very terrible attitude so that type of calling and pulling and pushing for going for a particular vyas puja is not a good idea but here we are talking about say of course most of you are not yet initiated so you have all these tensions once you become initiated it hardly matters you know this this doesn't become a question even your shiksha gurus don't fear or don't feel insecure ki ye kahi aur chala jayega kyun kahi ka already uska diksha ho gaya But this is a very terrible mentality. Why should we have this in first place? So I am saying, let's say it's a sensitive issue right now, especially if you go and attend, then it may strain your relationship with some devotees or maybe in the uh, superiors that you may have. But my understanding of this is, if we are firm in our relationship with Guru that we have chosen, and we uh, what do you call? do attend another guru's vyas puja not in the mood that you know i want to you know change or this and that we have our resolve is there at the same time we want to create that harmony within our community that should be allowed of course if somebody really wants to change his guru that also should be allowed why should he be told that you should not so that's another part of the discussion Let's go back to the question. How will we increase cooperation in our multi-guru culture? By doing, uh, by doing uh, seva with other disciples, other gurus. Yes, by inviting and involving other gurus disciples in the services that we do and the forums that we create. Understanding the services done by other gurus in addition to what we should also hear about the glories of other gurus. and meditate on their greatness and their glory in propas mission and not just become like a fundamentalist knowing only about our own guru yes and that also like um, appreciating that guru in front of that guru disciple yes in general everywhere <laughs> not just that guru's disciple we should appreciate other spiritual masters everywhere wherever we go we should speak positively appreciatively about them any other 
how will you increase cooperation on this term uh, prabhuji this training should be ma ma made mandatory actually for idc should be made mandatory yes uh, for every single yeah, person in iscon to you and we, we should even conduct this training for the for the senior uh, devotees also who already i mean got their initiation so i mean it will help hi thank you thank what you. we are planning is the counselors will do for the initiated devotees within their counseling group only but this one forum will be common forum for all gurus disciples to come and learn because here when they come and here and they see other gurus disciples are also sitting here then that creates a very very positive impact hmm. so that's the understanding is true uh, from management perspective uh, all uh, all gurus disciples should be having equal opportunity to serve the important sevas that should be handled at the management level that yes so equal dispersion of power resources and opportunities of service what else yes this is prabhu pas is con and not your my guru is con we are part of prabhu pas family our guru is also part of prabhu pas family so we have a big you know father uncles huge family here and we have a common grandfather all of us very nice uh, you take advantage of uh, association provided now uh, many gurus coming to our temple and we should come to hear them yes Uh, yes so i would just add a few points one of the things our temple tries to do is to ask all the diksha gurus to come together and give initiation together it completely dissolves the heat of the matter hmm? when three these gurus are sitting in one vyasasan <laughs> and everybody whoever has they chosen and they go and take diksha and everybody comes at that time to watch it just completely dismantles this whole understanding you know ye mera guru tera guru this that they see actually this is all allowed anybody can take inspiration from whoever they like second thing um uh, is to create a facility for celebrating vyas pujas properly for all the gurus and creating a culture of communal awareness that we should all attend these vyas pujas also this is for vamandev prabhu to consider on the website of our temple along with prabhupad's picture and introduction to prabhupad there should be another page dedicated to all the iskon visiting initiating gurus and their brief introductions that these are the initiating gurus visiting this temple and the candidates are welcome to join any of this uh, yes okay official gcs because the list of gurus is uh, too vast too vast so that okay at least the gcs the prominent visiting uh, governing authorities very nice um also the same thing can be done at the entrance of the temple only that you put up the picture and the name of the guru the visiting initiating gurus in iskon pune just put it everybody knows it there is no hiding no, no running away no nothing is properly displayed and it is known and people can then take their inspirations anyways and as you rightly said tell people to join iskon disciples course don't force join course <laughs> <laughs> so then this whole you know restricted i am bhagyavan consciousness you know will get tampered to the bhagyavan in the right context huh? not just because of connection to my guru but also connection to prabhupada and his mission so at this point of time i take this opportunity to thank all of you for successfully completing your iskon disciples course and bearing with me patiently for long hour sessions and this was one of the very enthusiastic groups from which i got maximum contributions especially in terms of the discussions that happened whole class discussions your contribution were not just voluminous they were very thoughtful 
every contribution was very meaningful so i really thank it is because of you that it became successful and i wish you all the best for your discipleship within iskon let's just go at the last part of the page what have you learned from this course would you just please take some few minutes time maybe 3 4 minutes and just write down going through the maybe rest of the handbook quickly some of the most important things that you have learned and you are going to practice from this course thank you hare krishna shri la prabhupada ki jai gor prabhanande hari hari go